Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this special episode of Really Dicey. This is Manny. And I'm Matt. I'm Mike Mason. I'm the, uh, what am I? I'm the creative director for the Call of Cthulhu tabletop role-playing game at Chaosium. And uh, uh, today we're going to talk about Keeper Tips. So before we begin, what exactly is Keeper Tips? Um, well, Keeper Tips is a um, what I would describe as a small hardback pocket book um, that we released um, just at the end of last year as part of the 40th anniversary for Call of Cthulhu, um, you know, back in uh, Back in uh, two thousand, sorry, 1981, not 2000, 1981, around just after Halloween, um, you know, the first edition of Call of Cthulhu, you know, slithered out of the Chaosium offices into the world and, uh, you know, spawned uh, immense numbers of games across many, many gaming tables and uh, has been doing so for 40 years. So um, one of the things we did as part of the celebrations was to put together uh, this book called Keeper's Tips, which is something um, I guess I've wanted to do for some time, but I hadn't really got a, a good, well, there's always a good reason to do something, but the anniversary kind of gave a real focus to that. So um, it is a just over, just over 100 pages long, a collection of advice for running, playing, um, writing uh, and you know basically enjoying the call of cthulhu role-playing game um and it's a collection of advice from a whole range of people um some of which have been involved in some capacity in terms of you know writing for the game since you know near its very beginnings um and some people who are newer younger um you know uh, with fresher voices perhaps um and we have you know, a real kind of diverse range of people who each bringing their own kind of takes on, you know, what what information would they want to share with somebody who is not only, you know, somebody who's new to the game and is just starting out, but equally, what pearls of wisdom are there for somebody who's been playing the game for 40 years or, or around that number? You know, we can all still learn things. We can all still you know, develop our game and, and um, you know, find find tips to uh, to make things cooler at the gaming table. And so the book is a whole collection of this kind of advice and um, some of it thought provoking, some of it practical, that kind of thing. That's, that's I guess, the, uh, in short, what it, what it is about. Mm. I'm always intrigued about how books come to be. Um, how how would you say how how did the idea of this book come about? Was it like maybe a, a discussion with friends or with the with the editors? Um, no, it was me. <laughs> it was me going. Wouldn't it be cool? Well, you know, when I started running Call of Cthulhu back in the day, back in nineteen eighty three four four. I can't remember exactly now. Um, wouldn't it have been cool if I had if I had a little book like this to tell me how to do it? You know, I've got the rule book. And there's, you know, there's good stuff in the rule book, clearly, but it would be really nice if there was lots of, lots of, you know, other things, you know, things I could just, you know, pick up and just sort of think about and, and kind of inspire me. And so um, that was really where it came from. And um, the way the kind of process worked is, I, I, you know, I thought it was a good idea. I thought it would be a nice thing to do for the anniversary. And, um, but I also knew that, you know, while I could have sat there and written the whole thing myself, I think that would have been a bit dull and, you know, just hearing my voice all the time. Um, and so I thought it was important to try and get a, you know, a, a real interesting spread of people and different voices together. And so my first stop, um, really, um, it was partly inspired, I guess, by uh, Mark Morrison, the Australian uh, role-playing game author, um, also the one of the uh, guys who runs Campaign Coins, um, he had actually posted a, just, a, just a handful of tips from you know, off his own back on his on his Twitter feed um, in the kind of run up, you know, um, in the run up uh, to the anniversaries, you know, earlier in the year. And um, I guess that kind of sparked with what I was thinking about. And I, I approached Mark and said, would you mind if we kind of took yours as the basis 
And then we built up from what you had done in terms of your tweets and, and you know, rework, rework them. Um, and so I guess Mark is the real kind of instigator. Um, and then I kind of gave it some form. And then, um, and then what I did is I, you know, I approached a range of people I knew who I considered to be, you know, um, you know, either good, you know, Call of Cthulhu writers or mainly good Call of Cthulhu keepers, GMs. Um, and, um, and I, you know, uh, I asked them, you know, do you want to, you know, can you give me like five or 10 really cool ideas you would want to share with another keeper? And, um, and everyone just went, yeah, that would be great. And they all went away and they wrote up, uh, they wrote up a load of ideas. Some, you know, some did 10, some did 20, some did more. And they, you know, they sent them all in. And then um, I kind of worked on kind of like, you know, looking at duplication and maybe compiling, you know, if I had two, two ideas, two tips from different people that were kind of the same thing, look at how I might compile them together to kind of get the best of both of them in one, you know, one statement. Um, and also look to kind of, you know, um, group them by particular headings, I guess. You know mm -hmm. what? What you know? What um, you know? Where, how, where, where, where would this advice fall? So, because I wanted to make the book as useful as possible, so I wanted to kind of, you know, there are kind of chapters in the book around certain aspects around the game, and so a lot of a lot of my time was spent kind of looking at all the tips and, and kind of grouping them and regrouping them into these kind of, you know, chapter headings to try and give it some sort of form and a sense of, again, you know, a bit of a sense of narrative as you go through the book but the idea has always been it's not a book you really necessarily read from start to finish it's a book that you just carry around and you dip in and out of you know when you're on your way to the convention or you're waiting for a game or you're on the you're on the bus you know heading to your friend's house to role play tonight or the club or or you know you're sitting drinking a cup of coffee on a Saturday morning it's a book you can just dip in and out of and it's meant to be it's meant to be a living book, as far as I'm concerned. You meant you are meant, and I give you permission to write in it, to draw lines through things you disagree, put ticks next to things you agree. In fact, I insisted at the back of the book there are blank pages. I don't know if you can see, but it says my notes at the back. Oh, there yeah. are blank pages for your own tips and advice as you be, you know as you run games and get ideas, or you did something really cool, or the players tell you that was really cool. Make a note of it. Because, you know, down the line, you probably forgot, forgot how cool you were that day. And it <laughs> becomes your book of tips. You know, it becomes a living, a living thing. Um, mm -hmm. That was always my intention with it anyway. Okay. It, one, one last question before I pass this to Matt. Um, the technical aspects of the book, uh, how, how big is it? How many chapters? Um, so it's, um, it's just over 100 pages before you get to the blank pages, which I'm not counting. Um, and um, there are... Uh, when I say chapters, it's more kind of there are you know content headers. So there are 17 categories plus a biography section about you know a little bit of um, biographical information about all the people that contributed to the book. So you kind of get an idea of who they are, what their history with the game is, and so forth as well. Um, but the the kind of the headings run from things like um, you know uh, designing scenarios, uh, inclusivity, um, keepering. Um, sanity, monsters, um, props and handouts, um, uh, what else, uh, ground rules, preparation, players, non-player characters, online play. These are all kind of topic headers where there are a number of kind of differing, differing pieces of advice underneath them. I see that in the description uh, on your web page, uh, they they uh, they mention that the skills in the book are also transferable other games. So it's not just Call of Cthulhu; it's just game mastering in general as well. I'm 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 I'm, I'm reliably told by other people <laughs> who've read the book that uh, play other games because I have no time to play other games other than Call of Cthulhu. <laughs> Clearly, but <laughs> no, I'm reliably told that obviously, 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 a lot of information is is very specific to Call of Cthulhu. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's a role playing game, yep. you know, and all role playing games share a lot of commonalities. So, yeah, so a lot of the advice is very transferable, immediately transferable, and some certainly is adaptable 
to uh, you know any other kind of role playing games, whether you're playing you know a kind of an old school kind of game set in dungeon or in space or something like that, or uh, you know a, a very high pulp kind of game or, or whatever whatever your you know whatever your chosen brew after Call of Cthulhu, which clearly is everyone's favourite game. Of course. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but no, it, 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 it's you know, it's it's. You know, I, I wrote it for Call of Cthulhu Keepers, but equally, it's it's clearly I've got some there's some nuggets of value there for anyone who you know role plays really. So I'm sure it's just jam packed with great stuff. But uh, any any tips stand out? Any of your favorite tips that you can remember? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I was looking. I kind of guess you might ask me this question. I thought I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go blank, aren't I? I'm gonna sure. forget what I want to say. So I made a few notes to kind of um, just remind me of a few things. One of the things I did purposefully in the book was not attach the people's names to the tips oh. because it's not about who the people are right. in terms of you know whose whose tips are better than the other's tips. That's oh, not yeah. what it's about. Um, okay. it's, a, it's a collection, and um, in fact, some of the tips. Um, directly contradict one another by Excellent. purpose because very one keeper's, one keeper's view for them is is correct, while another keeper's view is what works for them, and sure. they don't necessarily be the same thing. So that's why it's important that it's that you know that the tips are you know unnamed. Um, mm -hmm. You yeah, you know, we say who's contributed, but the tips are unnamed. But I mean. One of the tips, yeah, you know, I you know I hold dear uh, is the uh, very simple one: the, the rules of the game work for you, you don't work for them. Right. So let let the rules assist you in creating the game you are you know you want to create with the players. Don't let the rules become a straitjacket for you. You know the rules should assist and facilitate play. They should never, you know, limit your play. I guess is is the way to look at it. Um, a very, a very kind of um, specific Call of Cthulhu tip is not all cultists are other. Many look exactly like the investigators. Ah, so, so like you know, ensuring that you know, you know, um, you know, evil comes in many forms, and cultists come in many forms, um, and sometimes the the innocent. You know, looking ones who look just like the investigators are actually the you know the the baddies as it were i like um, that that makes a lot of sense i'm not sure about manny <laughs> 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 um another another really good one um a lot of you know a lot of advice is about you know working with the players to you know to get the best of the whole game uh, often you know although it's a book aimed at keepers um there's plenty of advice there for players too and things that you know they can take on a board and um one of the one of the tips i like is uh, when a player asks can i push that which is the pushing mechanic in call of cthulhu seventh edition right. turn the question back on them and say that sounds great what how are you doing that you know uh, so yeah. you know get the, the player comes up with a great idea often the keeper feels obliged to try and work it out for them well in fact no, let the player work there. It's a great idea. Let them come up with a great way that they want to incorporate it in the game. And your your job as a keeper gets easy because you just listen and hopefully just go, that sounds great. Let's give it a roll. Let's see if it works. You know. All right. So there's lots of things like that. There's, you know, there's there's stuff on um, you know, uh making props or using props in games. Uh, and in fact, we've got one of the contrib contributors is Sean Brani. Brandy, sorry, of the HP Lovecraft Historical Society, who does these fantastic sort of prop sets uh, for the game. He did the, uh, him and uh, Andrew Lehman did the uh, Masks of Anathotep grand kind of prop set. And they've recently just released um, the classic Call of Cthulhu uh, prop sets that uh, kind of sits with the uh, the Kickstarter Chaosium did last year for the kind of classic edition of Call of Cthulhu. Um, and so they, they, they kind of brought a lot of kind of um, useful advice on, you know, from their view in terms of how you make props, how you use them in games, what their value is. And so that's really cool. Um, and um, there's, you know, there's a lot on, um, you know, ensuring the group is getting the most out of things. And that, and that often can come down to things like setting ground rules about 
uh, being inclusive in your play, also being sensitive in terms of, you know, how you handle a game like Call of Duty, which is, you know, at the end of the day, it's a game of mystery and horror. The mystery is less, less of a problem, but the horror can be for some people, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, what, you know, understanding what horror is, horror means many things and means many things to different people. So that kind of understanding the um the sensitivity of, of your players and, and you as the keeper is is kind of important for this style of game ensuring that at the end of the day we're playing it to have fun and to have a great memorable experience right. we're not we're not doing it to call to cause us all you know deep trauma that we're <laughs> never going to want to play again you know so there's a lot of kind of advice around um you know how, how do you just do that in a practical way in an easy way in a non you know, non heavy way that just, you know, to just respects people's wishes and, um, you know, um, ensures that, you know, all voices are heard basically. Um, so there's, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, you know, varying advice. Um, the other, I, I'll give you one of the, one of the tip, um, just because the investigators are easy to kill doesn't mean you need to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, can uh, can be you know that that some of them are just meant to kind of drop a seed in your head to think to make you think about what are you trying to do here? What it, what are you, what's the purpose of this plot you're coming up with or this game you're running tonight? You know, what what are you trying to achieve here? Because because yeah. um, killing all your players is a surefire way to end the game. I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that'll do it. <laughs> well, that all sounds really great. Uh, that sounds wonderful. I like the fact that there are uh, different, possibly even conflicting tips. So it's not a book of, you know, rules that are telling you this is what you should be doing. It's no. suggestions and tips, like just like it says on the tin. So that's, uh, that's fantastic. Sounds great. I think uh, every keeper should go out and get a copy of this. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, it's, it's a... Um... It's a very gentle read. It's not, you know, the tips aren't, you know, they're all like one, maybe two, three sentences at most. Um, as I say, please get a big red marker when you're reading it. Put rings around things, cross things out, you know, make it a living living and working book for you. You know, if, you, if, you're, if you're the kind of collector type, then it's really simple. You get one copy that you can, you know, scrawl in, and then you buy the other one that you put on the shelf and you never touch. And that's your collection copy. There you really, go. Because I, 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 I'm, I'm terrible. I, I'll write over all my books and things like that. People kind of, you know, have conniptions about, you know, you're defacing your books. You know, like, you know, they go, well, it's fine. Yeah, just buy two. One piece. There you go. One, buy two. Not, not an issue. <laughs> They won't mind. Bye, too. That's okay. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, uh, not just for coming on, but thank you for putting this book together. This sounds fantastic. Yeah. So, so I have one more question for you before we wrap up. Um, what's next? What's the future for Chaosium when it comes to Call of Cthulhu? I know you just released, uh, just shared a bunch of news coming out of Chaosium Con, uh, but just curious, what's, what's coming up? Okay, so, yeah, so... Post Kesem Khan, uh, we have um, they're on the boat. We're just waiting for them to hit the warehouses. But in terms of immediate things that are due to come out in print now, are the Cults of Cthulhu book, which is the big book about you know Cults of Cthulhu and uh, and all that kind of stuff, and um, which uh, which was written by myself and Christopher Lackey. Um, and we've also got the campaign set in set in the Arkham kind of you know Miskatonic Valley region. Um, uh, which is a time to harvest, which is a, a great campaign, particularly if you're a newer or less experienced keeper and you're not quite ready for the kind of the world spanning massive 666 pages of masks of Nalathotep. This is a much <laughs> smaller, much focused, slightly easier kind of uh, campaign to run. Um, so we've got those two coming out immediately. Uh, and then following those, uh, we did announce at Cares in Khan that we got Regency Cthulhu set in the... Uh, you know, the very early um, uh, uh, 19th century when the King George III, I'm going to get that wrong, I know, the King George III, um, you know, uh, suffered uh, kind of debilitating madness and couldn't rule the country and the empire and his son uh, became Prince Regent. And this was the Regency era, basically 
shorthanded saying Jane Austen. So if you've seen Jane Austen films, that's the period we're talking about. <laughs> we have a book um, about creating characters and running games in that kind of, you know, that kind of um, Austen era, you know, era kind of um, a thing. And uh, we got two, comes with two quite large scenarios, which are really cool. Um, that's coming out um, following those two books I mentioned. But in terms of what we're you know, doing now, what I'm finishing at the moment is um, the next book after that will be um, Arkham, well, Arkham Unveiled, colon, The Legend Haunted City, or Arkham, The Legend Haunted City. Cool. And this is a um, an updating, a revision and development of the older uh, mm-hmm. book that originally was called Arkham Unveiled, uh, and then became H.P. Lovecraft's Arkham as a second edition. And this will be a, technically a third edition, but a new, you know, a new format, um, which is based on the work of um, Keith Herber, who did the original kind of work on developing Arkham as a living, breathing kind of sandbox for the Call of Cthulhu game. Um, and so uh, this new edition builds on what Keith has done and uh, adds some further information, some further layers and details. So you've got a very vibrant um, sandbox of the, of the town of Arkham, which includes Miskatonic University. Um, it's businesses, it's people, it's NPCs, it's uh, hidden, hidden horrors, it's secret societies, it's university and clubs and all that kind of stuff, um, all mapped out for you. Um, and um, we're just in the process of finishing off the text. It's kind of more or less done. We're now in the process of copy editing and checking and all that kind of thing. Um, and uh, we're getting uh, new maps are being you know, uh, developed and drawn by uh, uh, Matt and uh, Matt Ryan, who does, uh, you know, does our map work. And, um, and uh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be, you know, this is going to be book one in the Arkham Unveiled line of books. Uh, where we'll be revisiting the other books we, you know, I mentioned like uh, Innsmouth and Dunwich and uh, Kingsport and the Miskatonic University source book and scenario collections based in these locales. So this this Arkham book is the first book in this effectively, you know, redeveloped, reinvented um, subline within the Call of Cthulhu range. Mm. That's what's coming next. <laughs> <That's great>. Wow! <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> right. Excellent. Well, well, thank you, Mike, for taking the time to talk to us about uh, this book and all the stuff coming out. And um, to everyone out there, be safe. We'll see you soon. <laughs>